Welcome to Home Cinema and Tech Review. In this video, we're going to be talking about ultra short throw projectors in general and what are the upside of these things and when you should be choosing ultra short throw against the regular or the short throw models. Yes, there are short throw projectors out there and they are different than ultra short throw projectors and they have some space of their own, like market of their own. There are reasons for them. And the main focus of this video is to show you what an ultra short row can do a little bit in this video. But when you should be choosing ultra short row, what are the upsides and what are the downsides? Ultra short row projections means, projectors means, they are throwing the uh, screen from an ultra short distance. In this case, with Epson EB685WI, which is a 720p projector connecting to, connecting to uh, Xbox Series X 4K uh, console, and it's right now delivering Forza Horizon 5. So the picture quality is quite good, and the room is filled with light. There's a huge window open up to the garden, and also another huge window here, another huge window there. So the time is two and a half in the daylight. So this room filled with quite a lot of light that you normally don't project. The screen is white. Still, we don't have an ALR screen, but the picture is bright, a hell of a lot of brighter than many projectors out there. So the first, let's just start with the positives of the ultra short throws. Positive, you get a brighter image because you're close to the screen. Second, they are uh, more compact in a way that this is a small, these are smaller projectors, but uh, these things tend to stand on the TV unit, so you don't have anything extra. You don't need anything extra like a stand, anything extra like a holder arm, and you don't have to drill the walls. You don't have to adjust your cables, because if you put projectors up top like a ceiling, you have to put HDMI cables or maybe some power cables for the projector, for the dongle, for the console, whatever that you're going to connect. And you have to have a, some sort of holder and your ceiling will look like not good as this room. This is a normal, typical living room and we don't modify anything at all. So these are the advantages. And one other advantage is to create a TV style, smaller image very fast. Like if I go close, right now I'm 70 inch and if I touch it, like right now, it is about 50 inch size. I know it's not perfectly angled and it's not focused because the focused lever is on the right side. Right now, it's behind the cover. I will review this projector later on. So I have a huge image, like still TV size, but very, very, very bright. And I can use it on the daylight with just a white wall. So when I get back, if I can get back, I will check the legs and we are at the edge. TV unit. So don't worry if you see the projector is just falling, looking like it's fall, it's going to fall. It's not because legs are here. The weight distribution is heavy weight is around here. So this thing will stay on its own even if I push it, not like if I push it so hard. So these are the advantages. You can get TV size, you can get a big image from very short distance and I can walk without light hitting my face. I can protect my eyes easy. These are the advantages of ultra short throw. Positives are quite a lot. What about the negatives? We have limitations and everything has a price. So first thing is the cost. The cost of this uh, ultra short throw projectors, not especially this, this is a bargain. And I will create another video, whole another video. This is a secondhand 720p projector, but this kind of like a laser 4K Xiaomi and many new triple laser, triple LED or LED ultra short throw projections, projectors are about $1,500 and $4,000 limits, like what you buy for the money, what you can get. So the price is double, triple, or quadruple, maybe even five times much more than the uh, long throw or regular throw projectors. So the price is an issue if you have a budget, then still you might want to think about the long throw or regular throws. Second thing is a size. It might not be a problem for a lot of people. Just consider this. This is a regular throw projector. 
And this is a new generation, smallest, one of the smallest ultra short pro projectors. This is Xiaomi 4K. That's one of the reasons I bought it. And I will create a detail, hopefully, video soon. But I can put this thing inside of the TV unit easily. It is that small. But let's just compare this against the regular full HD projector. projector. So it is still big. So they, uh, ultra short pro projectors are big on the size and they're heavy. So this might not be an actual problem because you're going to put it once on the TV unit and you can forget about this or up top ceiling apply and forget about them. So this might not be an issue, but that's a fact. The one other thing is the screen size. What do you mean by the screen size if you can, if you ask? The screen size have limitations. Every optical element have some sort of limitations. If you even put, put your finger right into your face, when I teach photography, I'm a professional photographer over 20 years. When I talk about the focus and the zoom, I always show you the one finger or hand effect. Like if you put your finger very close to your eye and close the other eye, just focus on the fingers, you can't go closer than some sort of a degree. That's the minimal focus of your eye. But if you go way back to the infinity level, after some distance, you can't really differentiate it, right? If you're a myop or hypermetrop kind of like a eye problem, then you might not change focus like a regular healthy people. But we are talking about optical uh, aspect of things. So every lens has limitation. And these things have either mirror inside and optical element here, visual going from optical element from lens to the mirror and mirror to the screen. So they have like surfaces or other, if you don't have something like this, you have optical element here, you just project. If you have an ultra wide lens, there is a maximum focus distance for these projectors. So they can't properly focus to infinity. What that means is if I put this projector at just the back, a little bit, maybe 20 centimeters, it can't go above some sort of size and the focus will completely lost. So there are limitations. That's why they tend to declare 150 inch for ultra short throw 4K projectors. If you wanna project 200, 300 inch huge screens, you still do need to buy regular or long throw projections, projectors because they have lenses that can focus to infinity. These things are like macro lenses, but ultra wide and the macro all in one kind of lenses. So they tend to create a, you know, quite possibly square image from a very short distance. Like they are projecting like a fisheye camera lens. They can focus close up and they can go just a little bit and that's it. They have limitations like fisheye camera lens. So if you know the limitations, if you want to project above 150 inch or maybe even more sometimes, but generally you have to go regular throw. So if you created a cinema room with a big wall and if you have a huge wall or you're going to be projecting in the open area in a huge wall, you definitely need to buy a regular projectors. That's one of the limitations, the price, the screen size. The third thing, which, which is one of the most important parts, is the screen or the place that you're going to project. As you can see, I will make maybe another, another video about coming about this topic. As you can see, bending here, wavy effect. The screen waves and goes up. And also there is another wave. Screen is not straight. And there is another wave here. And let me just correct. There is another wave here. So we can correct some of the distortions from the menu of a um, four corner keystone kind of or arc correction. They have inside arc corrections because you're projecting from very close. But that's not going to change the wobbly effect. Just watch this. Uh, this shows a little bit of distortion from here. You have to be looking very carefully. Everything bends. Just look at the flowers. Look at the trees. Everything bends around here. Watch this area. Everything bends. Okay? Watch this area. If you have a line, it bends. So the distortions here is in the real life, not just in the edges. Everything distorts. Focus on this area. Everything waves. So you need to have a proper stretched screen, like fully stretched. They call it 
tensioned screens. Tensioned screens is probably three or five times expensive than the regular screens like this. And regular screens tend to have this sort of, as you can see, distortions. And they tend to not tensioned by its own. They have, they do not have the perfect flat surface. So these waves and curves that you don't normally see from the long throw, even though if you look carefully, you can see it, but ultra short throw makes these type of defects more obvious. So you're projecting from 45 degree angle. So every kind of bump on this screen or perfectly not stretched surface will show the distortion. So you need to pay three or four times much more money to the tension screen. And if you buy ALR, then probably cost about will be $800 to $1,500 or $2,000, depending if it's motorized tension ALR all in one, or it is just a fixed screen, it will be around $700 to $1,500, maybe even $2,000, depending on the size. So the price of the screen, when you include it, you're going again, uh, entry level 4K is about $1,500. And if you include one another $1,000, you are getting yourself in $2,500 range-ish for entry level 4K. And one other downside is entry level ultra short throws for 2023. Many of them, like entry level ones, are tend to focused for casual gamers and most of the time watching content. So if you're a enthusiast gamer with the Xbox Series X, PlayStation 5, or a PC. So you might need a low latency, like four seconds, eight seconds, and you might need a refresh rate, like 120, 140 hertz, because these devices deliver a huge amount of power when you play games. And if you're using FPS games, if you're playing online, like a battlefield, so you might wanna go in the upper level of these ultra short throws. When you do that, the price goes about, for the 4K models, $3,000 limit most of the time. So if you go maybe in older 4K models from the Epson LS, L, LSB 500, if I don't uh, call the models, they are 10 to about 8 milliseconds. But my Optoma UHD 35 from a long throw was giving me 4K 60p and full HD, 240 hertz and 4.2 milliseconds when I want to play competitive games. And I can have that projector about $700, brand new. So that's why the normal projectors are probably five times cheaper when you do want the competitive versions of them, like high, higher versions of them. And you can find bulb style long throw projectors in the second hand market because everybody wants to have ultra short throw or next gen 4k versions i made a clear video about this so you can buy a second hand market bulb models this is also a bulb ultra short throw which i will review later on the epson eb685 this is a 720 inch model and right now we're watching it and like i said in the beginning of the video this is a very lit room and we are seeing a pretty good picture if you darken the room a little bit, even just use the sun curtains, you know, close the curtains, the brightness and the contrast will increase huge. So you don't really need a screen. Like you can buy an ultra short throw and throw it on the wall if you're going to use it in a dark room. But if you're going to open up the lights, like if you pay $1,500, $1, $2,000 level of 4K projectors, then you want to use it like a TV, like every day okay when you do that you have to buy an alr screen and if you want to buy an alr you're going to the territory of 200 and 500 three thousand dollar level so when you get into that stage you can buy a mini led maybe 75 or 90 inch tv kind of ish like you can't buy oled or qled maybe but mini led or some sort of an hdr good tv you can buy 75 inch and do you want 75 inch of tv or 100 120 inch of projection that is up to you 
For me, it's about the size and I'm most of the time quite happy because I am watching the content after I get back from my job. So it's going to be late at night or when it go, uh, everywhere goes dark or I can just close the windows and I have also uh, covers for the windows. So I can lock the windows down and create a perfect black room here. So that's one of the things that you want to consider whether you should be buying an ultra short throw or go stick with the long throw. Mm. Let's just summarize things. If you want uh, easy to use, easy to apply with the cables connected and leave it alone and don't worry about it. So single unit to solve everything nearly or use it as a TV. And if you have the budget for it, then the ultra short throw might be your option. And if you have a small room and if you want big screen, the ultra short row is the solution. But you need to have the budget. Otherwise, if you want to go big, if you have a huge wall to fill with, and if you have enough distance, and if you don't want to too, uh, spend too much of a money, like five times less than the money for the ultra short row, then you can still stick, uh, stick up uh, with yourself, like stay with the long throw project projectors and you can buy uh, compact long throw projectors if you have a dark room right now i can create 100 inch and 120 inch with this small wombo t2 max this is a 400 probably it was about 450 lumens i remember so it's led and i am creating 100 inch of image in my uh, bedroom and i'm quite happy with the results so it's about your choice I'm not most of the time competitive gamer, so I can live with that. But when I play FIFA, even the FIFA, the players are moving, the grass becomes like a single color, fully blurred. This device has a lot of latency, so this is not a gamer projector. Maybe later on, I will change it. That's one of the reasons maybe people change, upgrade the Xiaomi, and later on go to the other models. But I am a casual gamer. And I can't play Forza Horizon 5, no matter what. So it doesn't bother me too much. I'm not a pixel peeper. But if you're focusing on that, then you have to pay a lot of money. I hope this video gave you enough information whether you should be thinking about ultra short throws or the regular throw projectors. You can be happy with all of them. Like if you're getting a good picture, that will make you probably happy. Don't worry about it. And Try to focus on your budget and your screen size, and then you can choose whatever you like. And I'm not against any technology, but just consider you have to buy an expensive screen with the ALR, uh, ultra short throws. ALR will be perfect for these devices, but you need to have an extra budget for them. And if you're going to use them, you might want to buy the best uh, if you have the budget. One last thing is a short throw projectors. There is something between ultra short throw and the regular throw projectors. Short throw projectors can create uh, 100 inch from one meter distance. So what's the point of the short throw then? Because you still need to put it on some sort of a table and project 100 inch of image from one 1.2 meters. The point is short throw projectors I know it's not the total topic of this video, but short throw projectors are tend to create quite brighter image than the regular throw projectors. Because if I wanted to use a regular throw, this or this one bow, for 100 inch, I need to be around here. But if I had a short throw version of a similar product, I am here. The light power from here to here is maybe five times much more because I'm getting very, very close. So the decreasing or increasing of the light will uh, be like mathematical uh, logarithmically, like very high point. And if I move it just a little bit, light drops huge amount, like half of the light. And if I move another 20, light will drop another half. Light will drop another half. So when I get here, it will probably drop like uh, eight times, 10 times. So that's why the ultra short rows are expensive if they declare same amount of light power. It's not going to be the same. So they will give it, let's just say 3000. This is a probably around 2700 lumens of projector and it's projecting from 25 centimeters and this is about 3000 level of projections 
but this gives the same size from two and a half meters. 20 centimeters, two and a half meters. Let's just think about this. Distance will decrease the light amount huge. So that's why these things are expensive. There is a reason for that. You have a huge amount of bright brightness and you can use it in the sunlight. But if you want to use these devices in the sunlight, you have to get close and you have to get small. That's one of the things that you have to give up. So there is a cost for that. That's one of the reasons. I hope this gives you enough information for the short throws. How you can use a short throw? You might want to put the short throw here and not use it as all, well, but connect the cables. And if you have a TV like me, just put the screen on and put some table here or some sort of a small unit. Just put it here for one meter and take it out with the cables. Cables will be coming from the TV unit. I will create maybe another video for that. And then in that scenario, you can have a 100 inch screen and the cables just will be coming from the TV unit. And when you put it back, you don't have to hassle with the cabling like the long throw does. Because if you want to use the long throw, you have to take it and place it in a place far away from the wall or the screen. And then you have to cable for it, either from beneath the couch or at the back of the couch. So you need to have some sort of stand, arm, custom thing. But short throw has its place of its own. And their optical lenses are much more expensive because throwing the light from a uh, short distance, you need to have a custom lens, bigger lens. So that's, that's why they are still more expensive. So if you're, if you don't have the budget of an ultra short throw, you can still think about the short throw projectors. They will give you the brightest picture possible in a budget and they will create sharper images than the regular projectors. And because they tend to use expensive lenses, not maybe extreme sharpness difference, but the main difference will, will be the light output. They will give it to you. So you can use short throw projections, projectors in the daylight like the ultra short throw similar setup but the best probably goes to the ultra short throw probably short throw projectors have also some sort of limitations because of the their optics please do check the maximum screen size minimal focus and maximum the distance uh, they can focus before purchase and calculate the screen size i will create whole another tutorial how you can calculate it from a website. I hope to see you in the next video. I hope this video gives you enough information about uh, ultra short throw projections, whether you should be buying or not. And the 720p, this budget projector review will come soon. And don't forget to like and subscribe. You can still go cheap and ultra short throw, but you have to give up some stuff. And we're going to be coming at that in the next couple of videos. Hope to see you in the next video.